Today, I'm in a little battle with Ring Doorbell. Ring Doorbell is a business, needs to make money. I get all that. But it is a little annoying when they give you something for a while and then they just take it away. Okay, I get it. But either way, I need to. F this is my back door. There is a ring doorbell there. As you can see, I have a driveway. Yeah, I know it's got water in it. I have a driveway, and when cars come in, over here, the ring doorbell, over here, senses they come in, and turns on the lights on the garage. Both here and here and up there. It was awesome. I bought the ring doorbells a little over a year ago and put them in and paid the $30 a year for each doorbell, one here and one in the back front, so that I could see the camera, store the images, and sense the stuff. So at some point, when the year contract ended up, I'm like, eh, I don't look at these images so much. I'm just going to let the contract go. I'm not going to pay them. And then for a couple of months, I kept getting my doorbell was working. I'm like, okay, they let me sense, but they won't let me store a video. Well, okay, I could do that. All of a sudden, in Home Assistant 103, actually 102, mine broke. I think the timing was coincidental. But Ring Doorbell changed to an AOS 2 uh, because they were getting hacked. And at the same time, it broke my Ring connection. Well, uh, good friends in the community fixed the Ring thing. So now I can connect to Ring. I can see when the doorbells are connected. But I'm not getting the sense that uh, there's some movement in the image, so I get nothing. Uh, it still works on the app. Uh, I can still see current image, but I can't see anything else. So, my idea is uh, a whole brew fix. Right? Fix, fix everything, right? So what I want to do, I'll show you in a minute here. But I'm going to take a sensor and mount it right here. Now I already got it mocked up and built up. Let me show you what it is. All right, here it is. I have taken a sensor from an old style motion light. This is an IR sensor. Runs on 110. And the way these work is they were hooked to a couple of lights. Um, this one I happened to get at $3 from a rummy sale or someplace. So, you take one of these buddies, coming out, you have three wires coming out of that sensor. A black, a white, and a red. Black, white, and red. The white is the neutral. The black is the power into that sensor, to the sensor. And the red is the switch out. So you apply power to the sensor. Uh, after the sensor decides it likes the environment and knows what's, what the temperature of the environment is and what neutral is in, in visual IR space, if you will, it enables itself. And then when there is IR or heat movement or movement in its IR image field, it switches the red on. So what I have done with that is I have wired this up. And I'll show you a little diagram. But I have regular 110 cord. It comes in to the black for the sensor. Black for the sensor here. That's what powers the whole thing. Then I have neutrals all coming together. And then the red out of the sensor 
goes to a simple 120 volt relay. Can you see it in there? Simple 120 volt relay. A little hard to see. You can see on the coil in there it says 120 volts. 110 volts, whatever. I so this is a relay. So now what will happen is that thing gets power. When it decides that there's movement, it'll click on this relay. This relay is a double pull, double throw. One set of contacts goes out to this indicator light. Since I had indicator lights, I thought that'd be cool in there. Have a little red light that pops on when it senses it because there isn't a red light that sometimes they have one that senses it on here you know well i put a little red light there so when the relay kicks on when the relay kicks on one of the poles turns on that light and the other pole is a dry contact and i have the dry contact coming out dry contact just means it's like a switch. Um, so when the sensor senses something, it's going to close two contacts. And it'll connect these two wires together. Now, in my home assistant world, in my garage, I know, my garage is a mess. We'll get to my garage later. Yeah, we'll get to this. Well, as you can see, we're on the other side of that window that I showed you before. But right up here, I have a Sonoff SV. The SV has a temperature sensor. It sends the temperature in my garage and tell Home Assistant the temperature in here. And I have, oh, let me get around the wire here, sorry. I have some extra contacts. So I'm gonna use a set of those contacts to run through this ESP and tell Home Assistant that, oh, there's movement in the backyard. You should turn on the lights. So that's what we're doing. I'm going to be mounting that stuff. It's going to it's going to come out of the wall over here somewhere. Oh, it's a little hard to see. I can have some light issues, right? There we go. So come out of the wall here somewhere. I have to see exactly where. And then we're going to run the wires across. Plug them in and hook it up. Sound like a plan? Let's go. It when I'm firing you up. This is we're gonna work right about here somewhere, which is on the other side of this. Wow, very very dirty window. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna put this in and. Yeah, I do realize that this probably should be hardwired. It should have an electrical box. It should be a lot of things. But it's not. So, if you're doing this at home, you're not quite sure what you're doing, you should probably talk to an electrician because they know what they're doing. I only think I know what I'm doing. And it's my house. So, now... I see, and they must, somebody must have had something mounted here a bunch of years ago. Not that it's going to make anything any prettier, but that looks like a good target spot for me. We're going to go for that spot. Right there. all the inner workings here. Uh, let's see. The plug will fit, I believe. Let's check. Nope. All right. So we're taking off everything here. 
I do have these marked already. Until I figured I'd probably have to take this stuff off. But I got these two double ones marked. These are going to the light. Take these apart. And this has to come off. Take this apart. I did tin these wires. Makes them a little happier when you're doing stuff like this. And one more wire nut. Well, as you can see, I got the stuff hung up here. Let's stuff it in the hole. Thing that I've always told you should never do that is very unsafe and all that stuff is the whole screws in your mouth but unfortunately guy only gave me two hands that's all I got straight ish Straight-ish. Alright. Now I can take this and probably point it up the driveway a little ways like this. Maybe down a little bit to catch the creatures. The light will come on when it's time. Why don't we say we go in and wire this thing up. Now we're inside. So you got the wires sticking out here. I hope I don't bump the camera too much. Here's the wires from the uh, light, little indicator light out there. Here's the one that turns, that runs the relay, right? This goes back into the switch as a common, and this goes back into the outdoor sensor switch as power. Let's take and take our spider web. Spider web here. Let's hook it up. Yeah, that's working well. Okay, let's try that. Okay, I pulled 
test works. Let's try over here. One last wire. Oh, come on. Ooh, stay. Okay, there we go. Now we have the two wires out to the white to the light outside. We have the common, which brings power from the neutral of the line cord and into and then to the relay and into the outside and then we got power out from the sensor and power into the sensor. Now Is this not? This is the this is the output. Get this unknotted here. Give me a second. All right. Now we just got two things to hook up. This cable, which is going to the SV, and this is the power cable. All right, there's the SV. You can see it's it's, it's uh, mounted to the wall inside the garage here. And the reason for that is it's to run the garage door. Um, the garage door, this uses the dry contacts on here. And it gets a sense from the other room. Yeah, I know it's blinking because right now it uh, right now it's confused and lost. So I'm gonna have to fix that in a few minutes. Let's just pull that plug on that one. We turn off the SV. So here I have three wires. I have a ground which is brown. I have a voltage wire here, which goes to a 4.7K resistor, 5K. It's gonna be a pull-up resistor. The pull-up resistor comes back to this, which is the other, which is the white wire in here. So the black, the brown goes to the black wire in here. The orange goes to the white wire and the red goes to a 4.7K to the white wire. So that's gonna give that a definite pull-up condition. So now I need to, so I got S, you can see it there, S, V, G. So, S, V, G. S, S for sensor, V for voltage, G for ground. So they get hooked up like this. Line these suckers up. I'll put them on there. I'm going to put them on GPIO 5. There you go. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Signal, which is orange, red, which is power, brown, which is ground. And again, ground comes into the black wire in here. Orange comes into the white wire in here. And the red is a pull-up resistor, which goes between orange on one side and then to the resistor and then to the power. So it gives, this gives me an absolute definite pull up. Um, I've had issues with the internal pull up on the, on the 8255 in there or 8266 or whatever the heck is it with the uh, ESP chip in there. Um, I don't always get a good pull up and I get some weird noise and stuff sometimes. Uh, and if you look at this, I plug this back in. You can see right now it's blinking, which means it can't find Wi-Fi, which means somehow um, the configuration is wiped and I can't get it back. I can't talk to it. I don't have a backup Wi-Fi connection. Um, so I'm going to re-blow that with a Tazbitizer 
which is an awesome tool by the way. I'll put a link to it in the uh, description. I use a taspatizer to uh, fire this thing back up. Come into here, load the load the config. I hear a helicopter, and uh, we'll go. Here is the SV module, the SV that I got sitting out in the garage, um, hooked to the wall there. This is the uh, also the garage door opener. That's why it's named garage door. Um, if I come in here and toggle this, this will go on for two seconds and then it'll shut off. And that's to simulate the garage, me pushing the garage door button with a dry contact. So that's how that works. It's hooked into Home Assistant with a um, with a. Uh, sorry about that. <clears throat> it's hooked a Home Assistant with a uh, uh, cover sensor, so I can open it up and lock it and stuff like that. What we're going to do now is turn on that stuff that we added. So if you look up here, this is the Tasmoda GitHub for the Sonoff SV. It tells you how to flash it and everything. Um, this is a picture of it. And we have the temperature sensor hooked to, see how it says GIO14? So GPIO14 is these or three. That's hooked to the temperature sensor. Then these are not hooked to anything and we're going to use these three for the relay pseudo relay if you will and this is gpio 5 where we have our switch connected you can see switch voltage ground that's what those mean and then 5 4 14 5 4 14 and i wanted to show you the picture of it here close up as i know you couldn't get a picture in the camera very well if i go over here this is the Amazon and Amazon page for buying these. If you do a search for Sonoff SV, you will find one. I don't have a affiliate link, so you know, feel free to use one of the affiliate links from uh, one of the other guys. I'm sure they probably have, you know, Doctor Z's or somebody probably has a Sonoff SV linked in there. Um, but this is where you get that switch from. Here's the web console for that device. If I look in here come in here and I toggle it it'll go on because that's the garage door I think I showed you that already we're gonna go into configuration we're gonna configure the module and we're gonna set uh, GPIO 5 as the switch because that's where we have the wires hooked up so that goes to switch 2 and we're gonna go GPIO 4 as the relay and there's gonna be physically nothing connected but it'll be our pseudo relay to hold our, our basically our placeholder within the uh, programming in order to know that something is on or something is off. We'll do a save on that. Do, do, do. Now, if you look, okay, it must be on for some reason, but. it's probably a bit confused because we have to add one more thing here. we have to put in here in order to set the switch mode for that switch mode two to one if you look at the wiki that tells it to follow so when the button is pushed the light will be on when the button is not pushed the light will be off so Oops, not that. So over here, hit enter, and we'll set the switch mode two to one. So now it'll follow, I believe. So let's go back to main menu, and I'm gonna go step outside and trigger the relay, and this, this should come on. All right.
Okay. Okay. I'm back. So I went out and triggered the relay, and as you can see, it came on all by itself, which is good, and it stays locked on. If I wouldn't have set the switch mode, this would have came on and went right back off. It would be in um, in uh, toggle mode. Right. So we want this to be in always on mode, which is switch mode. For this case, we got switch two, so switch mode two, space one, which is set switch mode two into mode one. All right, and we still have to go into configuration, and we're gonna. Uh, I don't want to go into Wi-Fi or MQTT. That would be bad, right? Um, other, right here, and we're gonna change the name of this to Yard PIR. So when I'm looking at it later, or if I would do a set option 19, this would pull this into the system as, as yard PIR. Um, do a save on this. And that's all we need from there. Just want to make sure it comes back. All right. This is going to be on for about four or five minutes, because that's how long that sensor sets for on. Let's go over into um, into Home Assistant. I'm going to blow that away. This is where I wanted to be. Here we go. All right. So I was trying to set it up in automation. What I need is a binary sensor, first of all. Copy and I do that again. All right, so PR senses on QTT. This is Yard Red Light PIR Class Motion Topic. Let's go back over here to the console, and our topic is Garage Door. Copy, Home Assistant, uh, let's see, state, so I need yeah, here's the whole thing. ON capital is what I gotta look for. Alright. Alright. Garage door stat power two. That's what's coming to the MQTC server. Payload on, payload off. Off delay. Don't want this one. I want this one to sense when it's on and when it's off. Force update off is fine. Garage door. So where can I find that? Well, I know it's garage door. Oh, that's probably that. Since that's also on a thing, so we'll just change the topic. So that topic, and that should be the right end. Online off sign should be right, because this is also a Tasmonia device that I stole this from. So, PIR sensor MQTT, this is all 
uh, comment it out so I can find it. Platform MQTT, it's called Yardlight PIR, it's a motion. Um, this is the MQTT topic it's looking at. If it's on, it does that. If it's off, it does that. All right. Save. And then we're going to go to Home Assistant, Configuration. Want to know my password? No. Not going to get it. Check. Make sure I did it right. All right, that's coming back. Do you want to reset for me? Now, let's bring up automations. Okay, so we're going to need, we'll find that, yard light PIR. All right, automations. Well, I started to edit one before, but um, I just canceled out of it. And it should have went away. And it didn't. So we're not going to get this from MQTT. We're going to get this from state. Let's copy this. All right, here we're going to copy this. Put this down here. Light PIR. Don't need the four. Eight. Need to be capitals. So now it's going to sense. Action. Switch. I'm going to toggle. We're not going to toggle this switch.
on. Then we're going to turn on switch that. I think garage something. Description on here. This is this is my old stuff that was for the uh, ring that isn't working anymore. So why don't I do this action? This does two things. So these lights stay on for eight minutes and then shut off. So this will start up so why don't I just do this here hey this would be smart well I don't really need condition dark outside because that sensor already does this, but wait. Come on. All right. So yard light PIR. All right. This on refers to the automation state, whether automation is activated or not. So the trigger is, and gets a sensor from that thing. The state goes from off to on. And the condition is that it's dark outside, which is another sensor I have. I guess I can show you that. Um, it's going to turn on this script and turn on the timeout script. All right. I can probably take this one and mothball it. And I can actually take this and put it up here. All right. So this is part of the garage. PIR. This is what I replaced. Looking at the ring, so I could have probably just put this trigger in here because that's really all I did. I may end up doing that in the future, but just for clarity, this is what I did. Um, I'll do a Control S to save this. Then we will go back to here, check it. So, valid reload on emissions. All right. So Another thing to do, go over here. Oh, I am there. Sorry. Here. Here we have garage. And this tells if the lights are on or off. So I am going to. The PR isn't even here, is it? I'm going to go out. And I'm going to trigger it, and you should see garage side lights come on, and the garage top light come on. So you should see these two come on. If I go out and turn the light, let's see if I got it to work.
No, boy, no. Well, I'm going to troubleshoot this and come back and see what happened. I'm going to put you on hold. No. <clears throat> All right. I think I figured out what's going on. Um. The way you're supposed to do this is uh, de detective, whatever. So we have to figure out. So let's go over here. So here it says clear and detected. And I've been playing around with it a little bit. So, I thought maybe clear and detected was I supposed to put in there, and no. Um, if we go over here, bring up developer tools, states, and look up the entity. So this is the backyard sensor. On and off lowercase is what it needs to be. Um, so if I come in here, I can well I've proven that I can set this and when I change it it comes in and on or off and it's lowercase. So let's go back over and edit that. Here. Let's go lowercase on and off. Now imagine if you get used to the new automation editor, it probably does all this for you. <laughs> um I'm just rather struggle with it this way. So lowercase on and off. So let's do a, a save and then that's the only thing I changed so I'm not going to check it. Um, come back over here. That's where we are. Come back over here. Configuration. Server controls. And we're just going to reload animations because I only change those two words and they're right. Don't need to do a check every time. You know, if you're doing if you're doing a little more extensive stuff, it's good to do a check, but not that. And what I'm going to do instead of running outside because that's getting a little boring. It's also like let's check in the garage. it's 37 degrees so you know it's kind of cool I'm going to from my phone I'm gonna flip this toggle on which should be the same as the door the light coming on out there so let's go into home assistant let's go into overview let's go down to Raj and now I'm going to flip that on And it's on, and that's not. Oh, I flipped it off and it went on. <laughs> All right, let's force these off. All right, let me look. Do I have this backwards? From on to off. <laughs> so when I turn it off, it turns it on. Well, it's sort of working now. Off to on. Let's try that. Do do server controls. Not going to check. Reload automations. Spinning wheel of death. All right. Let's come up here. Overview. Yes. Okay. Garage lights. You know what we'll do here? Let's do this. Let's bring the PIR sensor into there, which I want to do anyway. So let's configure the UI. Yes. All right. Box, no, garage. Let's edit the garage. 
Let's add something. Yard light binary sensor. up and let's save it there's a yard light PIR so now I'm going to okay, so I'm able to see this and that I should be turning on this and this when this little guy starts to run. So let me toggle the SV. He starts to run and those turn on. And I should have lights. And I have lights. Ah, got to work. Yay. All right. That's all we're going to go through today. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you got something out of it. Please like the video if you can and subscribe if you're interested. I plan on doing a lot of these videos, but as you can tell, I'm just starting out. So the video is a little bit rough um, working on it. Um, but thanks for watching. Bye.